Morning, everybody. Uh, if you just watched me my previous video and the sound was cutting in and out, sorry about that. I had the wrong microphone on the computer uh, selected, and so that's the microphone that doesn't really work. So I apologize for that. Uh, here uh, we're taking a look at our storm for Saturday, uh, this Saturday. So um, here is the current radar, and if you're looking at this current radar, you're probably saying to yourself, "Boy, this looks promising in terms of us getting a pretty good snowstorm this weekend." We got a lot of snow here over the Upper Midwest. Um, we got quite a bit of energy. You can even see some thunderstorms down here. Um, this is going to head in our direction and maybe give us a good snowstorm. Well, that was the original plan, but unfortunately, uh, it looks like the warm air is going to win out. We're going to go into uh, talking a little bit about why that is going to happen in a little bit. Uh, but let's start by looking quickly at satellite uh, imagery here as well. And we can see our storm. Uh, developing. There's quite a train of Pacific moisture coming in here uh, over Texas and giving us a uh, and providing plenty of ample moisture. And this satellite picture actually kind of really shows the story of why uh, the models, if you've been paying attention to this storm from last week, if you're really uh, looking at your long term forecast, you probably noticed that for quite a while, this, uh, all the all signs have been pointing towards snow this weekend. Um, but there's been a wrinkle in the forecast, uh, which is that this storm here over the south, just off the southeast coast, has been stronger than the models anticipated, and uh, mainly stronger in that there's been a lot more convection. Uh, convection is anytime basically thunderstorms is what um, convection is. And so the problem with convection here is that it is uh, when that pushes heat from the lower atmosphere into the upper atmosphere. Um, and that's not always modeled real well. And I think that's the real problem the models have had here. It's been pushing heat, uh, kind of building some heat over the southeast here. Um, and so the cold is, is slowly being pushed north, even though the storm is way south here. And so that's going to change. Unfortunately, what was going to happen with the storm, let's uh, take a look instead of here. Let's look at the... Uh, current storm or uh, current surface analysis. This storm here was over the central, northern central plains, kind of over Minnesota, Iowa, was going to kind of swing to our north here over the Great Lakes. Um, and this storm here, which is just kind of a low pressure system at the end of the front, they're kind of connected, but uh, w this was going to become the dominant low as it swung here off the, well not quite off the coast, but I kind of to here like and redevelop, maybe even redevelop a little north of there and kind of slide northeast that way right there. That was the original thought process and that would have given us just enough cold air. We were still marginal because the uh, overall pattern is still pretty warm. We are chipping away at that warmth, but it's still pretty warm. It would have been just marginally cold enough to give us snow. Um, but it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen now, and I think that's because there's been just enough heat here that there's not enough enough heat got pushed north here that there's not enough of a temperature gradient from the land where it's colder to the ocean where it's warmer. Um, that temperature gradient, the warmer it got, it, that warmer air got pushed over over land, and so that it kind of collapsed, and so this storm doesn't quite transfer its energy as fast. So the, the energy kind of just gets stuck here uh, and this storm doesn't really ever get going. And what that means is that instead of pushing, holding, locking in just enough cold air for snow to essentially be the dominant precipitation form here, it means that we're going to end up with rain probably, maybe some snow at higher elevations. There's still a couple of models that want to kind of lock in some colder air. The European model particularly wants to do that, but it's been sort of giving way. Um, I don't think this is completely locked in. It is possible that we still hold on to enough cold air. It's possible that this storm still develops, you know, somewhere here or even up here around New York City and kind of heads to the northeast and it gets just strong enough to hold in cold air. That's, uh, but I think that's a, an unlikely scenario at this point. Maybe uh, I would give that maybe a 10 to 15 percent chance of happening. Otherwise, I think we're probably looking at rain um, with a little bit of snow at higher elevations. Maybe a slushy, uh, basically in the valleys, uh, we may start as a few snowflakes, maybe not even that, um, and then basically be all rain the entire event. At higher elevations, 
I think there's going to be a little bit of snow mixed in in the beginning. You could get a slushy inch or two, and by higher elevations, I mean probably 2,000 feet. Um, way up high, very tops of mountains, you know, 3,000 feet, which is, you know, just the very tops of the highest higher mountains here in the Southern Greens. Uh, you could be looking at two or three inches of snow. Even there, I think you go to rain. Um, unless this uh, scenario where we do get a little stronger secondary development uh, holds the case. I think we'll probably have those details worked out uh, today. Um, basically, this has really shifted over the last basically 36 hours, even 24 hours. 24 hours ago, I would have told you we were getting mostly snow. So, um, and uh, But the models have really moved in this direction, and there seems to be good reason for them to move in this direction. So, um, Unless something changes again today, I think we're kind of stuck with that. Um, I will, uh, new models come out at noon. They should have a little bit more information in them, um, although all the players are already on the map, so there's not a tremendous amount that can change this forecast, but we're close to the line. We wouldn't have to be that much colder, two degrees colder, um, kind of aloft and at the surface, and we'd probably be looking at a wet snow as opposed to rain. So it's a, it's a close call, so it doesn't have to change much. So I will update you. Uh, this evening, probably with a text update, maybe go live again tomorrow morning, particularly if something changes, I'll go live tomorrow morning. Otherwise, it might just be a text update to kind of let you know what's going on. Um, let me show you what that means in terms of uh, the forecast highlights. Precipitation starts during the afternoon on Saturday. Right now, we're looking at mostly rain with some snow rain mix for the higher elevations. And like I said, the forecast is trended warmer. There is still some uncertainty, so uh, further monitoring is necessary. Uh, precipitation would probably wrap up um, sometime overnight on Saturday into Sunday. Uh, and there will probably be, as the upper level low or as that primary low kind of starts to transla translate east of us, um, some wraparound snow showers. Uh, and that will, stuff will change back over to snow. That could add up to a slushy, to, a, to an inch or two, for, certainly for the higher elevations in the valleys, maybe just a quick coating. Um, we are slowly chipping away at this pattern of warmness over the uh, east coast, uh, but we're still kind of in it. So um, I do think that we are trending towards more of a trough in the east uh, ridge in the west pattern, which is where we have opportunity for snowstorms. I think that over the next uh, week to two to even next over the next month, it looks like the pattern wants to shift a little bit. Um, doesn't look like any super cold air is in place to do that, but it does look like the pattern wants to shift some. So if you're looking for sustained winter weather, um, there's it seems like we're moving in that direction, um, but we'll have to kind of see. This pattern has been very stubborn, and so even as it's started to shift this week, we've kind of seen uh, there's been some mitigating factors that have kept it from kind of fully shifting into a into a pattern that's better for storms for us. I'll keep you updated, and certainly as, as interesting stuff happens, I'll let you know what's going on. Otherwise, I uh, hope you have a safe and a good day.